Welcome to Creating the Good with AARP Illinois, a show with inspiring people who we hope will inspire you. And now, your hosts, Bob Gallo and Rosanna Marquez. I'm Rosanna Marquez, State President of AARP Illinois. We're excited to be here with you on our weekly radio show, Creating the Good with AARP Illinois. If you're hearing us for the first time, welcome. We're talking with some fascinating folks who are making a big difference in their local communities. My co-host Bob Gallo is away this week and sitting in for him today is Alvaro Obregón, who is Associate State Director for Advocacy and Outreach at AARP Illinois. And you know what? He is also the founder of the Chicago Mariachi Project, a nonprofit group that promotes the very famous kind of music known as mariachi. Thank you so much, Alvaro, for co-hosting with me. You know, your expertise on the subject of Mexican music is going to come in very handy as we speak with our guest today. Our guest is Victor Pichardo, a multi-instrumentalist composer and folklorist from Mexico City who has called Chicago home for nearly 30 years. That's right, Rosanna. He specializes in the son style of Mexican music and he'll tell us all about that. Victor is co-founder of Sones de Mexico Ensemble and among his many credits is a Grammy nomination. He's also composed classical pieces and works with Chicago Symphony Orchestra and the Chicago Sinfoniera. And he's big on education. Some 26 years ago, in fact, he started a mariachi program at Benito Juarez Community Academy here in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood to continue Mexican musical traditions for a new generation. That's wonderful. And he's here just in time to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and Mexican Independence Day on September 16th. Thank you so much, Victor, for being here with us today on Creating the Good with ARP Illinois. My pleasure. Muchas gracias por invitarme. Sí, sí, sí. So tell us about son. What is son? What, what, what is the history of son in Mexico? Where, where did it begin and how? Well, it comes with the Mexican conquest, uh, which was in, in the in 1500s. But uh, at that point, the, the Spaniards start to send some uh, uh, missionaries from uh, different areas of, of, of Spain. One of them were the Jesuits, Jesuits, <laughs> Jesuitas. They brought a lot of, of their uh, Baroque uh, music and, um, yeah, at that time in Europe. And they start to spread the, the, this um, um, music, uh, uh, feedback to the Mexicans, with the Mexicans uh, uh, natives, the Indians, and everybody started to to learn how to play the violin, the, the strings, instruments, and along with that uh, instrumentation, they brought their styles of music, which uh, started to develop in a different way in Mexico. In in, in 18, 1600, I think. Uh, uh, um, the music, Mexican music was very, um, in Mexican music was very popular. The term son, S-O-N, which is the music, the lively music that represents today to the Mexicans. Mm -hmm. So then why is it important for you to play and compose in the son style of Mexican music? Well, I grew up with this uh, style of music since I was a uh, little, I, I heard the um, mariachi music and all kinds of uh, Mexican uh, folk styles. And in uh, in my high school, I started to get into a little more when I uh, met my 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 teacher, uh, uh, the famous composer Arturo Marquez. He uh, uh, invited me to be part of the music group of the high school, and he started to, to, to teach some corridos and songs, Mexican folk songs that can uh, represent the Mexican culture among the youth that we've been in, in, 
in seventies, the seventies. And after that, I he, he encouraged me to be a professional musician and to study music. In, and I went to the School of Music, Escuela Nacional de Música, mm -hmm. and I started my band in '81, Sacil, which uh, is, was a very important band because uh, we start to spread the all the folk music we have in Mexico to the different areas that they don't know. They didn't know the the different folk styles that we have in, 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 in our country. So that was the way I started my career. And I was, I switched to the Mexican folk music because it's, it's my heritage and it's my passion. Mm -hmm. That's lovely, that's lovely. And, and so what are the original instruments used to play son? And how many instruments have you yourself learned to play over the years? Well, I um, I had in my family my my grandfather from Querétaro, from uh, Central Mexico. He was part of a small orchestra called Orquesta Típica in Querétaro, and he played the violin. So he, I I saw him playing uh, tunes like Jesucita en Chihuahua polkas, waltzes, and chotices. The music the music styles that was very popular in the 1920s. So I uh, uh, inherit the violin and I start to play with that violin, wapangos and folk music uh, in the first hand with, with four folkloric dance companies. In, uh, the, we represented different uh, regions of Mexico with music and dance, and every region requires different instrumentation. instrumentation. So that's why I had to learn how to play the marimba, how to play the clarinet, saxophone, sometimes accordion, harp, any instrument needed to represent every region of Mexico. But my main instrument is the violin and the guitar, Mexican mm -hmm. guitars. Mm -hmm. Victor, you uh, um, you talked about you know how you started playing uh, traditional Mexican music. Can you tell us where where in Mexico you've played and um, how far you've gone? Well, I uh, play in all Mexico because I have the chance to tour, to travel for the Mexican government at that time. They have a, a cultural program that, that was um, um, very, very, very uh, uh, big with uh, very interesting artists that I met at that time, Amparo Choa, Eugenia Leon, um, uh, Guillermo Velázquez, Oscar Chavez, many uh, popular uh, singers at that time, which one, uh, which I, I, I also started to collaborate at that time in the 80s. So I, I did a very nice con collaboration with Amparo Choa. He was her music director for nine years until she passed, unfortunately, away in 94 when I moved to Chicago. And also with uh, Oscar Chavez, with the, the folk singer, the pro protest songs, Mexican, most important in, in Mexico, Oscar Chavez. He just passed away because of the COVID, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, like uh, three months ago. And um, with those guys, I grow a lot as a musician professionally, and I learn a lot how to, to be uh, better and better. Sure, and then and then you came to Chicago in 1994, and you co-founded Sones de Mexico Ensemble. It's a group of musicians you've been playing with ever since. What's your favorite memory of playing with Sones de Mexico, Victor? Well, it was the 25th anniversary in the Millennium Park. We played in front of uh, 10 10,000 people, which was amazing. Just they came just to see to watch Sons de Mexico and to watch Mexican folk music. And it was incredible, incredible. It's something, we had more than 70 people on stage, artists, uh, between uh, uh, dancers and um, musicians and um, incredible people from the CSO Brass Ensemble and the uh, Latino trio of, of horns. Also, we had the, uh, the Irish, the Irish um, 
uh, and School of Music, among many others. It was an amazing experience and it's something that I have in mind. And we wanted to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> we, we couldn't. We, we had a, a schedule for the, the 11th of September for the Millennium Park this year, but unfortunately it couldn't happen. But it, it will happen next year. Well, that's a, uh, that is a day that, that I remember very clearly as if it happened ah, yesterday. Yes. <laughs> it, was, um, it was beautiful. I think I, I was choked up then and I get choked up uh, just thinking about it. Yes, um, it is. And what I think is so fascinating about Tron is that it encompasses various regional sounds from Mexico, yet it can also bring people together from all over the world and speaking of that day, right, um, you also have a song called Huapangos. Let's hear a clip of this unique fusion. Let us drink one for the Irish. Let us dye the river green. In Rio Verde, it is stylish to send San Patricio down the street. I want to get up and dance. <laughs> get up and dance. Yeah, my feet are going here. Yeah, yes, you should, should be. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think this is one of the beautiful things, right, Victor? And you've used music to build cultural bridges by working with these Irish musicians that we just heard, but also some blues musicians with uh, Sones in Mexico. Can you tell us more about that and what made you decide to get involved in that way? Well, uh, I, when I, when I arrived to America, I, everybody um, encouraged me to make a, to, to form a group of polkas, I mean, uh, cumbias or, or banda music. But I really wanted to show the American audience the Mexican song, the Mexican uh, folk uh, music. And I thought the, the best way to do it is to incorporate some of the elements that they were familiar, the people, the American audience were familiar. So uh, the collaboration started with, first of all, with the Irish people. Somebody in, uh, invited us to the uh, San Patricio uh, celebration in August of uh, maybe in 97, something like that. And I had the idea to uh, uh, incorporate a jig from the Irish people and I, a jig, which is my favorite jig, to the uh, Mexican uh, folk style, which is guapango. And uh, it was uh, amazing because um, it fits very well. So sometimes tradition, it's the same in everywhere. The core is the same. We just need to, to do some arrangements, some adjustments to make it happen. And that's what it happened. The people, the Irish started to to uh, help with their own ideas, how to make it, to blend it. And it, it was created a great, great concept. Together with the CSO Brass Ensemble, which was part in, in the same song. Uh, and it was a, 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 another um, collaboration, important collaboration that we have because of the CSO, we wanted to be more, um, uh, wide, spread wide in the Mexican or Latino communi uh, communities, and they hire, hire also they um, to collaborate with them. And I, it was an, an amazing experience because I get back to school after that. I needed to make uh, more arrangement in classical style for Mexican uh, uh, to revival the Mexican folk styles, and and I'm very proud to to be part of the, and everything for the community. Mexicans uh, is the people who really uh, deserve this. As somebody says in our country, they are we are Mexican heroes. <laughs> because we change our culture and everything to come here and, and be part of a very different culture, but also to incorporate what we, the cultural bagage that we have. Of course, and, and for those who don't know, um, 
uh, or aren't sure what CSO stands for, it stands for Chicago Symphony Orchestra, which many people consider the world's greatest orchestra. And so for, for uh, Sonas and Mickey, uh, yes, <laughs> without a doubt, uh, to play with them is, is, um, is incredible. And so speaking of Sonas de Mexico, uh, we know that you composed a very special album celebrating Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood called mm. Fandango on 18th Street or Fandango en la 18. Why was this album important or special? And why did you want to create an album celebrating the Mexican community in Pilsen? <laughs> well, we started the band in, in Pilsen in 94 and the Taller Mexicano de Grabado, what was in that time in, in Holstead, uh, and uh, close to the Canal Street, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, we were invited to play there. And we, our first gig, our first gig was in in that that um, uh, in site. And uh, since then, we started really to be involved with the Mexican community. And the best way to honor our co our community was to make an album or music dedicated to them. Uh, and using most of the of the Mexican folk style folk styles we have, but also popular the, like the cumbia. So we use the uh, we we try to 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 play music uh, from different areas of Mexico, and uh, start this uh, album from the beginning to the end for dancing. So. You don't know how to dance polka, guapango, or whatever, but you can figure it out. Just, just with the music itself, takes you to a different mood and different tour. Yeah. That was the, the reason why, and we we collaborate a lot in Casas Clan. Uh, unfortunately, she's not uh, anymore in the neighborhood, but uh, there we we did a, a very important uh, community outreach. Casas Clan was our home for a long time in Racine and 18th Street. Yes. Let's hear a little snippet from that album, a song okay. called Mariachi. Okay. Wow, que precioso. That's Muy a very, very, yeah, very famous, very famous song. Takes me back to family gatherings where we every Christmas got, uh, you know, the uncles with the guitars and, you know, we were all singing. It's it's very, uh, it's so very it memorable. Picture that sang by 2,000 people or more in Millennium. Yeah. Because it, it is our, 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 our last song all the time. It's our... our, our so sure it, is. it was sure. that's why it's the most memorable moment yeah. that I have in Sonas de Mexico with all that people singing Celito Lindo. I was gonna say they're all and everybody I'm just singing together. Oh, I mean, yeah. They're not just and listening that, to this, you know. It's everybody's going yeah, rocking yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well well, this is such a fun interview, but we have to take a real short break here. So we'll be right back in a moment. You are listening to Creating the Good with AARP Illinois. Don't go away. Today is your day to make a difference. AARP is here in Illinois working hard to make it an even better place to live, work, and play. You can help us too. Get involved as an AARP volunteer. Help advocate for the issues that matter in our state and community, which could improve the quality of life for yourself and the people around you. For more information on ways you can get involved in your local community, visit aarp.org il. And we're back. You're listening to Creating the Good with AARP Illinois. I'm Alvaro Obregón, Associate State Director for Advocacy and Outreach at AARP Illinois. And I'm sitting in for Bob Gallo this week. Here with me is co-host Rosana Marquez, State President of AARP Illinois. We've been having a great time speaking with Victor Pichardo, a composer who also plays several instruments and he is co-founder of Sones de Mexico Ensemble here in Chicago. 
Victor, let's continue where we left off. Sones de Mexico also offers music and dance classes to teach young people in the community about the culture, heritage, and history of Mexico. Why was it important to start these classes for children in Chicago? Well, uh, it was uh, a demand of, of the community. Community wanted uh, a little more um, uh, educational programs. Uh, and actually, the way I, I arrived to Chicago in '94 is because I was uh, invited by uh, Urban Gateways. It was uh, an uh, arts and education organization, and they wanted Americans wanted that Mexicans had more on, and the American uh, students had more of Mexican culture. That's why I, I really started here in Chicago. And after that, uh, I I. I was also asked if I could uh, make a mariachi program in in the in, in the Benito Juarez High School. At that time, Jose Rodriguez, the the, the principal, asked me uh, that, and I said, "Well, I can do that." And that's the the, the the moment I started with with this this program. It wasn't a really uh, it, it was more traditional mariachi music, more than the the the, the popular, the commercial what you saw in the in all the, uh, what, what I mean, the <laughs> television, TV shows and whatever. We are a little humble, more humble than that. <laughs> so, because I love tradition and sometimes uh, it's the way I, 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 the way I can teach my, 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 my knowledge. So, uh, and after that, we started to make a little more um, uh, outreach through Sones de Mexico doing shows for children. Uh, Fiesta Mexicana is the name of our show for children for from age from uh, uh, K to 12. And it was it very, it is very successful because we can share in 40 minutes uh, uh, the, the, why the um, cultural uh, stuff we have in Mexico. And uh, it, with inter interacting with the children to dance and whatever, they, they love our program. And it, that was the way uh, that we, we could uh, reach more audience and more people and, and be more into the American culture. Sure. Hey, I, I can attest that when people see you there, they always say, maestro, maestro. <laughs> so, um, well, what is it that you like about teaching, Victor? And do you have a favorite memory? I know that many of your students continue to play professionally. Oh, yes. You, as a teacher, seeing them play uh, across Chicago, the United States, Mexico, mm -hmm. and including at the Latin Grammys, right? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, that was a, a good, good memory because um, when I, we, we were nominated for the Latin Grammys and we were there in, the, in Las Vegas. I don't know the, the place, but it was in Las Vegas. And I saw uh, one of familiar face a little a little far from me, and I say, I know this guy, uh, and I keep looking. At his, and I say, well, he's one of my students of uh, Benito Juarez, and I say hello, and he say, please, teacher, come come this way because I was in the in the in the not uh, famous people in, among the not famous people. He was with. Vicente Fernandez and the other guys, no. I said, come on, I want to introduce you to my band, which was Montes de Durango. At that time, they, they won the, the, the Grammys. And uh, he, he introduced me to his uh, uh, um, to the friend band. with the band. And uh, it was something, he introduced me as the teacher who started to, how to play the guitar. So, <laughs> and it was, uh, I, I, I was uh, uh, very proud to, to to be a teacher, I assume every time that I uh, have a, a children uh, in front of me, a, a child in front of me, is like my son. I need to, 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 to teach him something, that not just music, but also something that can help you, can help the people in life, not just music. Music is, is, the, is the, the, the way, but uh, we can, as a teachers, give more to the, more than music, more than culture to our, our children. 
So that's the way I, I think I can teach. That's beautiful, Victor. And, you know, um, continuing on this theme, um, and we have, uh, you know, I've, I have said this, and you know this, that you planted uh, a musical seed back in 1994, and this seed has given fruit to groups such as Chicago Mariachi Project, which yeah. you're also a part of, among others. I know. Yeah. How do you feel seeing mariachi music grow so much in Chicago from when wow. we started uh, these programs in a formal way? Well, it was, it was, it was uh, 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 amazing. It is amazing how not the, not just the mariachi programs, but also the Mexican uh, folk bands. We have more than 10 here in Chicago. When I arrived, I was the only one. But my students themselves develop their own uh, styles. Some, somebody play rock music, somebody play cumbia, others play mariachi. But uh, yes, uh, the way we have um, influenced the, the Mexican uh, community, it was very important. And through the mariachi programs, it's, it's, uh, it's something very special because it's our, 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 our main folk uh, uh, style that the world knows and uh, have developed a lot. It sounds, uh, it sounds a little different in, the, the, in America than Mexico. You know very well the Mariachi Vargas. They have uh, set a style of, of how to play the, the Mariachi music, but America have developed their own way. So, uh, and also something that we haven't had at that time, is to mix girls with with boys. Uh, at, girls is not. It wasn't very well seen in, among mariachi <laughs> musicians because we have not very good reputation. I don't know why, but <laughs> anyway. So, but I started to the the, the the girls came to me and 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 asked me to to learn how to play mariachi, and I say come on and 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 learn whatever you want. And today we have a lot of girls and women playing mariachi music, mm -hmm. which is very interesting and very important for the, not just for, for Chicago, but and also for Mexicans, because in Mexico it's, it's harder to allow girls to be part of mariachis. <laughs> so in Mexico, in America, it's a little easier, a little easier. But, and that's the way we, we, we have a, we plant the seed, as you, as you mentioned. And actually, in this during in this year, at the in the spring year, we we had to to uh, open a, a, a American Mariachi, which is a, a a play dedicated to women who one who started to play mariachi music for the Goodman Theater. I I, I will be the 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 music director for this. Uh, a show, and it, and I think it's coming for the next uh, uh, June. I mean uh, January. So it's it was postponed because of the COVID, but everything is postponed. But anyway, it, it's a, a good way to to reach mariachi music, not through not just through through men. The way I used to do it in Garibaldi, in the main plaza in Mexico City, I used to, I there were no women there, no women. Just sometimes one or two singers, female singers. But at these times, we can sing Guadalajara in the fest in mariachi festivals, mm -hmm. a lot of very nice uh, uh, female uh, players. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so let me um, switch gears a little bit here, uh, Victor. Uh, we, we hear you've been, uh, you've been riding out the coronavirus pandemic in Mexico. And you're back in Chicago for some events commemorating Hispanic Heritage Month and Mexican Independence mm -hmm. Day. Tell us, tell us a little more about that. Well, I, uh, as I said, I, I, uh, every, everything stopped in Chicago in, in, in the middle of uh, March. March. And, uh, but I, I, I decided to, to go to Mexico because there I have a school of music. I started a school of music in a small village called Yautepec in Morelos, very close to Cuernavaca, two hours from Mexico City. 
and it's the paradise. It's the eternal spring. They call the place of the eternal spring. I did it. It's the paradise. So I, they uh, uh, invite me again to come back, and I sp sp spend some four, four, four months there, waiting what is going to happen now. Yeah. And um, there I, I started to collaborate with people from California to make the score of the Maria, American Mariachi with Cynthia Flores, who is a, 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 a Maria, female mariachi player, violin player. He was the, the music director of the Reinas de Los Angeles. You remember that, Alvaro? Yes. We brought that people to the to the to the, to the uh, Benito Juarez High School. And uh, 25 years after, I, I met her again. <laughs> and I collaborate doing all the score to, to, uh, to make it a little more uh, uh, accurate for, 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 the, for the actors and, and, and musicians. So that's what I have doing, doing this time, not stop, doing my own compositions and whatever, keep, keep, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, that's right. And so to these days, how can people follow your work or uh, find out more about the Sones de Mexico classes? Do, do you have a website? Uh, can people volunteer? Uh, can people make donations? Tell us about that. Everything. So, yes, we have Sones de Mexico Ensemble.com. No, Sones de Mexico.com. And we can, uh, yes, just email us and, and ask for my educational programs and ask for educational um, uh, shows and everything needed for to know a little more about Mexico and, and its culture and music and but uh, it's it's very important to to keep um, running in in any way as we are doing now online we just recorded yesterday for the Ravinia festival something uh, uh, dedicated to the Mexican independence. No audience in the main stage. <laughs> <laughs> very, very weird because yeah. it was everything empty, just the, 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 our, in, ourselves in a, on the stage. And they recorded three pieces that are going to stream during the Mexican Independence Day. We're very important. Today, tomorrow, we are going to do the same for the Old Town School of Folk Music. So I think little by little, People getting used to our new life, way, a new style of way, a new life style. <laughs> we all adapt. We all adapt. So, yes. so what advice do you have for others who might want to contribute their time to make their communities better, as you have, but but aren't sure where to start? Where to start? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, um, in the school. Yeah, I think it, I I think. You have to go to the School of Music if you really want to be um, a professional, to be a, 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 a good musician. You can be by yourself, but uh, a school helps a lot. And now you have the chance to start in, in, um, in, in primary, in um, elementary, you know? I was in Mexico long, for four months. I my English is not uh, like yeah, that. you're doing fine. You're doing Sorry. fine. Yeah. But yes, I I have a lot of, of uh, Spanish uh, terms and words in my mind. Uh, opposite, when I go to Mexico and I spend more time here in America, well, <laughs> it's hard for me to uh, uh, adapt. But uh, yeah. the way it's is to have to learn. Uh, also, they can learn Spanish through the music and through the lyrics and through the culture. So they have more, more and more schools are um, including uh, Mexican or Latino uh, programs to their to their curriculums to make a, a little more um, I don't know it's familiar to the American notice we are very close to the, to the South Mexico and Central America and, and most of Americans watch across the, the sea to the Spain to Spain and other mm -hmm. places. I don't know why. <laughs> they don't look mm -hmm. into America, to Latin America, and they look to, when I started with the CSO, they, they ask, they say, we are going to play something Latin. Okay. And they start with Carmen. 
from this set. And it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. I love it. But this is not a, a Latin American. This is a French or a Sp Spaniard, you know? Yeah. So that's something that, uh, but now it's different. You remember uh, in 20 years ago, uh, Cinco de Mayo was the Independence Day for Americans. Now they know that the 15th of September is, <laughs> you know, every, really, all, all those things have changed because of, of uh, our, our influence we have with the American audiences, trying to give them, let them know that uh, Mexican American and um, Mexican culture, it's, uh, it's more than, than mariachi music. I so mariachi the idea, Victor, that you have of, of uh, teaching um, the next generation and, you know, what you've done, uh, that lesson of, you know, where to contribute, how do you make your, your community better? Well, it's also, as you've said, right, um, that next generation and investing in it in them um and this has been so great uh that time has just flown by i wish we had many more hours um we have to go victor it's a pleasure as always to see you my to pleasure to, you, to learn from you maestro <laughs> um, and thank you so much for being on the show and for sharing with us all that you do and inspiring others to help create the good thank you thank you for your words alvaro i really appreciate it thank you Rosanna for having your program very important yeah. to let know them uh, to the americans and the latino people that we are alive and we keep going we keep going yep yep we sure do so that was victor pichardo with the sones de mexico ensemble group thank you so much for being with us here today and a special thanks to my guest co-host this week alvaro obregon Associate State Director for Advocacy and Outreach at AARP Illinois. It's been a great pleasure to be here with you, Anna, today. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to Creating the Good with AARP Illinois, a show where every week we'll talk with those who are making a difference in their community. For more information on ways you too can get involved in your local community, visit createthegood.org. Or to learn more, visit aarp.org forward slash il.